What is up guys and welcome back to In The Shop TV. My name is Mike, that's my 1955 Chevy truck project. If you've been following along, we've been building a four link suspension for about a month now. Our four link started out as a regular kit that you can get right out of the box and it turned into a full blown custom four link that we had to redo almost everything. Well, half of everything. We gotta make a new cross member. We had to come up with boxing plates. We had to step notch our frame. We had to do all types of stuff, custom pan hard bar, you name it. Right now, we're focusing our attention finally onto the rear axle housing. It's just an empty axle tube right now. We gutted it all out. We're getting ready to reassemble it, finish welding it, get the rust off of it, get it painted. We're gonna get it put back in this truck so we can start mocking up for our wheels. If you guys have been following along even longer than that, that rear axle came out of a 96 Ford Explorer. It's a Ford 8.8 .8 with three and a quarter inch tubes, 373 gear ratio, 31 spline axles, disc brakes, and a partridge in a pear tree. It's a little bit long on one side, so we shortened it. Didn't go too bad, one more side to go. So the pinion is kind of centered now and our total track width is about 59 and a half inches, which is perfect for this 55 Chevy truck frame. First things first, we're gonna get the truck up in the air, let our axle tube hang and start unbolting everything. All right, so we're suspended on jack stands in front of the axle housing here on the frame. All right, so with our axle completely slack, what we're gonna do is put a little bit of pressure on it with the jack. Not really much, just to support it so that when I unbolt these coilovers, it doesn't fall straight to the ground. I'm also gonna slip this dolly into place right in front of it so that when we do get it free and lower it down, it doesn't hit the concrete. We're also gonna unbolt this first so that we can drop the whole axle assembly so we can get these bolts out of the bracket because right now the frame's in the way. So I got it set up on some jack stands. This makes sense. Keep close to the frame so that when I'm done, I put it back on the dolly. You don't have much room to slide it back under. Less work.
right, so we are all welded in completely around both sides. So let's take a look down the axle tube to see how we did. Here you can see zooming in that we definitely got good weld penetration on both of those brackets. Really good weld penetration, in fact. Looks like we're just a split second from getting a little bit too good penetration. So this view is kind of cool because we switch over to the other side. You can see where we initially made the cut to shorten the axle and the weld flowing through it. And it kind of just worked out this way where the bracket was. You know, it kind of makes it stronger having the bracket on both sides of that cut. You can also kind of clearly see that there's some debris in there from when we made our cut. Just kind of highlights how important it is that we do one final clean up before reassembly. So in the footage where I was welding, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I really moved around a lot from one side to another, from inside to out with the welding gun. Um, those brackets, these brackets right here, they're really long and they're 3 sixteenths of an inch. And I think just with that, that distance that they're splayed out like that, they really can have a tendency to bend and pull and move around. So I wanted to, you know, do a, a half of a bead on one side and move to the other side and do another half a bead, then move to the other side of the axle and do another half a bead and go on the inside and vice versa and just keep moving as much as I can to redistribute that heat throughout different points of the axle. Also the tube itself, I know it's a quarter of an inch thick, but still you want to keep that as true as possible and not get too much heat into that because any little bit of distortion that can cause some serious trouble down the road when you're trying to drive. I think the plan of attack um, next is to get the wire wheel out, put it on the grinder and try to clean this up as best as possible. I'm not going to be really anal about it and take it down to shiny metal all over the place. And, you know, I just want to get knock the, the loose stuff off, the dirt, the grime, the, the surface rust. Um, and then I think we'll clean it up really good once again, wash the inside out, clean the outside down. Or maybe we'll just vacuum it up because I put this through a pressure washer and I actually took this to like an automated, um, you know, a coin op car wash and cleaned it out twice with soap and all that good stuff. So I think we will just vacuum it out really good. Uh, with a shop back or something like that, wipe it down with some paint prep. So before I start scraping and wire wheeling this and all that, I think I want to get all these bolts back in and tighten this diff cover back down. The last thing I want is for a bunch of shit to fly under here and get into the pumpkin. And uh, it's just stuff that we can't see and it'll really mess us up. So I'll just get this tightened down real quick. This hole right here too, this is the, um, for the vent breather. I'm gonna replace this obviously, but I actually probably should have had this in there the whole time I was working on it because that also just allows a bunch of crap to flow down there into the tube. So I'm gonna go ahead while I still remember and uh, it's never too late to do the right thing, get that in there so that grinding wheel doesn't throw a bunch of crap down there. It's finger tight, is fine. I think that'll pretty much do it. I think we're ready to start grinding on this and get it ready for paint. I got a few ideas about what products I want to use in terms of painting this and priming it and whatnot, but I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. Let me know what you use or what you'd like to see or what you think should be used when painting a rear end assembly. Guys, that's going to do it for this one. We're getting ready to get this cleaned up and painted. Every time you guys hit that like button, it really helps our channel grow. It tells YouTube that we're doing something decent. Um, so please like, comment, subscribe. I look forward to all your comments. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.